It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Kansas City Chiefs and the Houston Texans coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly, your keys to the game. Well, partner, I could give you the standard ones, turnover, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football, gives their defense a break, and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. We are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. And this taken in at the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The KC offense set to go, led as always by the gunslinger, a former MVP in this league, it's Patrick Mahomes. And when you think of Patrick Mahomes, you start to think about all of his attributes and you realize very quickly, you can't just put him into one box. No matter how the game proceeds, no matter what is needed, he tends to have an answer for it and plays accordingly. Meanwhile, Mahomes throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll bring up a second and short. Zero hesitation that time. That was get ball, throw ball. Yeah, it turned into a smoke route. If you see the coverage off the receiver, doesn't matter whether you call it a run or not. Just take the ball. Get it out to him. On play action, it's Mahomes. Pitch and catch here to Travis Kelsey. And Kelsey's going to have a Chiefs first down as the tackle going to be made up at the 37. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. From the 42-yard line, here's second and five. Now here's Mahomes. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it, and really gets them amped up as they go forward. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. They work now on second and nine. From midfield, here's Mahomes. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. They fake the give. Now Mahomes. 
He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 37. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. Has a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? Yeah, they should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. A give right side for Pacheco. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. No doubt about it. Really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Pacheco gets it again on second down. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. An 11-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Chiefs first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Mahomes now on first down. A quick throw there is incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On the handoff, it's Pacheco. A little second effort there on the strong run. And then dropped just inside of the 20. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. They're able to find the open man. That's complete. And the Chiefs are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Uh, that's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Here's Mahomes to throw. Chiefs touchdown. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Chiefs put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Partner, are they going to cover him? That's four catches in the touchdown grab on that opening drive. Well, what we're seeing so far, I believe, is their understanding that they want to go to him and often but also they know they've got to move him around a little bit, get him into some different spots to continue to find open space to throw him the football. Otherwise, I just run two or three guys at him. They're doing a nice job of finding his way open, scheming him, as they like to say. Extra point by Butker is on target, and it's now a 7-0 game. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And he'll very wisely take a knee here as they'll bring this one out to the 25 on the touchback. So here come the Texans now for their first drive. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you've got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. Stroud now on first and ten. Over the middle, and 
and it's incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll run it for the first time with Damian Pierce. A strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. On first down, here's Stroud. And he's taken down, a Chiefs sack. Chris Jones, what an effort from him on that play. Big tackle for a loss of 11. But you just knew that these rushers were eager to do that today. Put him on the ground. Their plan? Introduce themselves individually to this rookie quarterback. They said a load a big way there with a loss of double-digit yards on that sack. Now they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. A first carry for the former Oklahoma Sooner, Joe Mixon. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. This is the target incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Kansas City taking the field for their second drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 nothing lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 nothing lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Mahomes going to throw. Open man is the tight end, Noah Gray. First time that they called his number tonight, and it gets him a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Pacheco. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Second and seven. Play action. Now it's Mahomes. And his throw is incomplete. Well, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand. And that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now Mahomes. And he's got his man, Marquise Brown. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 39. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, 
exactly as he drew it up in practice. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 39-yard line. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. And that flag accepted. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. From the gun, it's Mahomes. And his throw is going to be incomplete. There are a good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Mahomes to throw once more. Over the middle, that's caught by Rice. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Throwing now is Mahomes. That is pulled in by a diving Kelsey. The Chiefs have got the passing game rolling a bit, and another first down. I felt that one all the way up here. How about that big man laying out and making that catch? Yeah, that wasn't a 180-pound wideout. That was a tight end. Pacheco gets it up the gun. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. And yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That was a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Now Mahomes throwing on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I don't want to blow it too out of proportion, but maybe circle this play because if they get the stop and hold them to a field goal here, that's a pretty good job. They're already down on the scoreboard. A stop now would be vital for them because it could save them from having to do it multiple times later in the game in order to either get back into it or maybe have a chance to win. Throwing is Mahomes on third. Touchdown! Marquise Brown with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Chiefs have taken a 13-0 first quarter lead. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two, two touchdowns. Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they've played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. Extra point by Butker is on target, and it's now 14 to nothing. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's Hollywood, Marquise Brown, who finishes it off with the touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. Play action. Stroud now. And that nearly a turnover, but it's incomplete. Oh, fortunate to retain possession there, and it's second down. Partner, I came into this game eager to see how they would hold up in man coverage. But on that play, they held up quite well. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Stroud. 
This goes out wide for Mixon. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football. As they've got it with a first and 10. Now Stroud. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. It'll go down as a gain of six. And it's second down. This is Mixon, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Four yards to pick up, first down. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. And Stroud wisely slides down safely after picking up the first down. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. As we both know, there was a lot that went into why they made him their first round pick this year. Part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker. So now first and 10 in Chiefs territory at the 27. Stroud sets up the play action. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. After the penalty, it's Mixon. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. That was huge after being behind the chains on first down to make the second very manageable. Man, how much pride do you have in an offense on first down to get that kind of yardage? Because it actually opens up your playbook on second down. You can run it. You can throw it. You keep a defense off balance. I like that phrase, staying ahead of the chains, and they're doing exactly that. Gets around him. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Again, it's Mixon. And here he'll get it down to the 7. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Four yards to go on second down from the seven. A shotgun snap to Stroud, and it's caught. And the Texans are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. It was Leo Chanel who got in to drop him. Well, surprise, surprise. First and goal at the one. No quarterback sneak. No running play. They decide to throw for it, but the pressure got to him quickly and put the quarterback down.
It's second and goal, back to the eight-yard line now. Stroud to throw it. This is caught. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. C.J. Stroud keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Texans are back within a score. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that'll make our score 14 to seven. So that one, a 13 play drive in total. And it was CJ Stroud who finished off that drive with the touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Here comes Mr. Hollywood, Marquise Brown, leading out this offense. We're in the second quarter. He already has two touchdowns. We know how good he is. That's well documented. How do you contain him? We know he's a nightmare. So in this situation, I would go ahead and double him. Maybe even have a third person in the area and try and dissuade them from throwing him the football. Make someone else beat me for a while because I don't know that their talents are his because when he gets his hands on the ball, he breaks down my entire D. Someone else, they may not make the same type of a play. Well, we know his talents are very good. Looking to throw is Mahomes. Trying for Brown and it's intercepted. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. Well, this was a 14-0 game not too long ago. Things were looking pretty good. And then you give up the touchdown on the last drive, now the interception. So that's a lesson in trying to stay vigilant, isn't it? You have to stay on top of things. Can't relax too much because, as you noted, things change. Now they've got to go out there and get a spark going again and try and slow down this comeback. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. And they'll take over here following the interception with a chance to tie the ball game. It's first and 10. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Mixon. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. So they've been unable to capitalize on the great field position as of yet. Here's third and nine. Stroud out of the gun here. the 37-yard line. Chris Jones able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright, and this will stay at a seven-point game. 
Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. So now here are the Chiefs as their offense makes their way back out onto the field. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. A quick throw here out to Brown. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Mahomes now to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 15-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. It appears they found something that's working, and they keep going back to it. I guess you can actually say he has the hot hands now, doesn't he? Yeah, well, it's one thing to hit your guy out of the backfield once, hit him a couple times. Yeah, you're right, maybe they're onto something. And I think a lot of that is simply if you get it to him in spate. And Brown's got it for a Kansas City touchdown. A great play there. On his way to a monster game, three first-half touchdowns. And the Chiefs go up by two touchdowns. So not only is that his third touchdown catch of the game, he's done it here in the first half. I'm not sure defensively what they're going to come up with to slow him down because already we're seeing him run past, over, through guys in order to make these catches. And being able to try and shut him down at this stage of the game, it's going to take a lot of effort. So maybe it'll open things up for some other people. Well, they better figure something out and soon. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I... There he goes, right side. Down the sideline he goes. Joe Mixon. Touchdown, Houston. Joe Mixon, 75 yards. And the Texans are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. And we didn't even get a chance to settle in for that drive. A quick strike of 75 yards, and they find the end zone. Don't you get the sense that film study was behind this one, that they saw something that they thought they could take advantage of? 
the key is calling it in the right situation. Knowing when it exists to go to it, they did exactly that. They've got to feel really good about what they did in advance of this game. Just looking down at the sideline now, their defense is like, man, can you have strung that out just a few <laughs> plays? Give us a break. Back out there. Hey, man, get that water break and get on out there and play. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Here comes Mr. Hollywood, Marquise Brown, leading out this offense. He's the star wide receiver, and he's doing his thing so far here into the second quarter. And how you get distinguished as a star is each and every week performing to a high level no matter what they throw at you because you always want to take him out of the game if you're a defensive team. How do you press him, double him, triple him, all those things, but the best players show up each and every week, solid games and some spectacular ones. And he has showed up time and time again. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. Here's Mahomes to throw. He finds Watson, it's caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. It'll go as a gain of 25 on a play that started back at the 25. First and ten, here's Pacheco. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It was Daniil Hunter to make the play in the backfield. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. Pacheco gets it again on second down. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Third down and six. Shotgun snap to Mahomes. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 29-yard line. A nice pickup of 17 yards. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Back to the air on second down. It's Mahomes. Well, it looked like they marched to the end zone. Was hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion? No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, they'll throw with Mahomes. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Well, give him credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. He's put up numbers in this one by pushing the envelope a bit whenever he could with deeper throws. But let's play a little philosophy here. Some plays it works. Sometimes they're ready for you. And that time, they were on guard. Incomplete. Butker's kick here is good. And the lead works.
bumps its way up to 10, 24-14. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. And Charles, you can't really fault him. He's over 100 yards already. He's not the reason they're losing. And that is really unusual because ordinarily when you set the tone this way and have run it this effectively, usually your team's in control. So it's a very strange situation. And you're right, you can't fault him. He's done a great job for his team thus far. I'm guessing he's saying, feed me on the sidelines. Now will they continue to do it? Stroud getting his offense to the line quickly. Second down and in inches. He finds his target, it's Schultz. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. A first and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Stroud's throw taken in by Diggs. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Well, this hasn't really been a first half to remember on either side of the ball, but I think this kind of makes this an important drive. You'd love to get this back to a one-score game if you can, and that's good work there to get some yardage here and pick up the first down. Hey, what we got? Let's go, baby. All right, go get him now. On first down, here's Stroud. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Pierce. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And this is back down to a seven-point game. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports halftime report. We saw a couple of high octane offenses getting it done in the first half. Both teams had no problems moving the football. And you'd have to think, the team whose defense shows up in the second half is going to be the one who walks out of here 
with a victory. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. And the half will begin with a touchback. The Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. Well, out of the locker rooms, here they come. Their first drive of the third quarter. And, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, But we got a tight one and set up to be a very entertaining second half. And as we know, partner, in the NFL, there's trailing and there's trailing, right? Sometimes you're discouraged by how much you're down. But in this case, this is a tight ball game, so there's a sense of optimism here. I think they went into half and looked at their play sheet and said, these are the plays we really like. What do you say we use them to start the second half and get us going? So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Here's Stroud. That's complete. It's Collins. The result only four yards there on the play. And now it's third and three. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Ten yards there. Good enough for a Texan first down. They brought in the heavy set on third down. And that usually means running play. But we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one. Wound up hitting him for a first down. So now first and 10 in Chiefs territory at the 45-yard line. A handoff to Mixon. Boy, shifts past him. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Back to Mixon on second down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. Well, I would have figured after the nine-yard run on the previous play, getting one more yard wouldn't have been much of a problem. But apparently it was, and now it's third down. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And that'll bring him back within four. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. 
You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. Fair Bear now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Here comes Mr. Hollywood, Marquise Brown, leading out this offense. So far, he has the trio of touchdowns. Obviously, it's been a pretty good game for him. So if this were hockey, they'd be throwing their hats out on the ice for the hat trick, right? I'm not sure exactly what you do in the NFL, except applaud and continue to hope you see a little bit more of this. What a tremendous game. You want to start a new tradition? What can we throw on the field? I don't know. We'll throw your mic out there. <laughs> a lot of fans would like that. <laughs> Cut his mic off. <laughs> Three touchdowns so far. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Man open left side is Brown. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. And the officials here are going to pause the game for a second. Looks like there's an injured chief on the field. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Now second and five. Here's Pacheco headed right. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game. That's allowed them to move the ball on offense, but I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides, but to see the ball in a running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. A quick throw caught by Rice. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. They'll come up now third and nine. From midfield, here's Mahomes. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 25-yard line. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. First down, Mahomes. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. And it's straight, it's Pacheco. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. 49 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. To throw, it's Mahomes. Open man right side is Rice. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up second down. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. A run by Pacheco on second down. And he's going to take it into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Isaiah Pacheco. 
A three-yard touchdown run. And they are able to add on to their advantage. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And here comes the Texans now. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Uh, give to Pierce now on the option. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Option play, and it's a handoff to Pierce. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. Stroud to the air on first and 10. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Stroud off the play fake. He's got the hook up with Diggs. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 24-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. Stroud now on first and ten. Throw right side taken in by Collins. So the completion good for six yards. And it's second down. Throwing again is Stroud. And that is caught. Diggs. Stephon Diggs from 19 yards away. And the Texans have cut it back within a score. That's why you've got your star out there. Throw the ball to him. They did. That's simply saying we don't care what coverage you put out there. He's so good, we're going there with the football anyway, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Inside the red zone, they go to him, he gets it done. But D'Amico Ryans, even with the defensive mindset, he'll elect to go for two here. Stroud's going to try to throw for the conversion. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Justin Reed. Well, as most teams do in their two-point attempt, they pass the ball. Instead, it gets intercepted, and 
Remember, if you pick it off, you get a chance to take it all the way back and get two points yourself, right? Yeah, not the case there, but that's why you got to be really careful with those throws, especially to the outside. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Now this Chiefs offense gets set to go again. They have played so strongly. You look at the scoreboard, you, you probably, with the way they played, you would think the margin would be a lot bigger, right? You would. And in your experience, how many times have we run into coaches? Trying to fight his tight end, Kelsey, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Christian Harris, and his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Oh, this is a great play right here by a very versatile linebacker. It's a zone defense, so he's responsible for one area of the field. And Brandon, I don't think the quarterback ever saw him. Or if he did, he saw him too late because he snuck into a great position there to pick that one off. C.J. Stroud ready to lead the Texans on their next drive. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. Seven yards there and a first down. Mixing up the middle. And he's brought down. 146 yards rushing for him now as his big night continues. He continues to have a big night here under the lights carrying the football. And some guys prefer night games for whatever reason. Their bodies react a certain way. They love the spotlight. Maybe that's what it is. The best seats in the house, the ones where he's carrying the football for his offensive teammates, the worst seats, the 11 guys trying to tackle him on defense. It'll be first and goal when we come back. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. It's Texans football, but they trail here as we get started in the fourth quarter. Mixon will take this one in for a Texans touchdown. So he had a nice run to get him down there. Was stopped just short of the goal line, but they go right back to him, CD, and he delivers to finish the drive off. A little extra determination there, don't you think, partner? You notice he didn't tap on his helmet and say, get me out after the run down to the end zone. He said, I almost got in. I'm going to get in on my own. I'm staying in, and he carries it across the goal line. They'll try and throw for it. So a sack on the two-point try. Well, that decision to me was all about pulling up the chart. You know, that, that beautiful chart that tells you when to go for two, when you to go that for chart. one. I do <laughs> love it. It helps you with your decision-making during heated times. And just look at it right here in this part, point of the game. Go for two. Try and make it a field goal difference. But now just up one makes the rest of this fourth quarter a little more interesting. Yeah, they followed the chart. They just didn't get the two points on the board, did they? Nope. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Montrell Washington on the return from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. And out come the Chiefs now. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at their own 24. 
He'll start the drive here with Pacheco. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Sometimes I think cornerbacks can benefit from the fact that quarterbacks might just forget about the idea that they might be near the line of scrimmage. How about the anticipation there sneaking in and making a big play in the backfield? In motion left goes Watson. Mahomes taps this forward. It's a jet sweep. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. And a lot of times, these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage. And here, they got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. The Chiefs on third down. They've been flat getting it done. Eight for nine to this point. This time they face a third and two. They'll try for the first with Pacheco. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Give him 13 yards there at a Kansas City first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Mahomes now on first down. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. So much of this game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball. They run it with Pacheco from the gun. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. 72 yards rushing for him now to this point. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Here's Pacheco once again. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Brandon, this can be so demoralizing for a defense. They've had two opportunities to get off the field. They haven't gotten it done. So now your coordinator, he's going to call every blitz that he has, any type of exotic, something that they haven't seen before. And he's also telling the defensive linemen, don't worry about holding people up. Just get in gaps and try and make a big play. And not only not getting off the field, on two opportunities, clock continuing to run. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. It'll go as a gain of 10 and a Kansas City first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Mahomes now on first down. And that is dropped! Oh my goodness, that could have been a game changer, but he could not hang on. Oh man, late in a tight ball game, every play so critical, you feel like you've got to find a way to come up with that football. That was put in a great spot, but it just didn't want to stick in his hands. That's a big letdown. Mahomes throw complete here to his receiver Brown. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 12-yard line. So give them the yardage on the pass and half the distance to the goal line. Because they're inside the 30, so now you don't march off the full 15, right? You have half the distance to the goal. In any event, that's precious real estate given up. So now after the face mask penalty, here's first and goal. Here comes Edwards Alaire on the toss right. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Second and goal from inside the five. Looking to throw is Mahomes. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Ronnie Johnson picks it. And the Texans are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll 
take over at the 20-yard line. So a costly INT in the end zone, no less, puts the brakes on their potential scoring drive. So many teams stick with the passing game down near the goal line because they see it as an extension of what they do between the 20s. But as we said many, many times, the further you drive, the more the field shrinks. And that was a nice job of making a play on the football and coming away with the interception. First and 10, it's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. From the 22, here's second and eight. From the gun, to give to Mixon. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Stroud. And it is caught, and they worked this well up field across the 35. 90 yards receiving now for him in the ball game. It's a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Mixon with a first down carry. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. He ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Back to Mixon on second down. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. 166 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you've got to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. The running game continues to be a big part of their success here early in the fourth quarter. And with those types of runs, that tells you they feel very confident in their running game. They feel very strong at this stage of the contest. And they want to keep doing exactly what we saw there, running the ball down their throat. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. I think what we just saw their partner was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see on. And they'll get him down right about the 20. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Stroud on third down now. That's complete to Dell. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. Needing the tough yards, they run it with a fullback. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. And here's a big one now. Trying to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. A give to the fullback on the dive. But he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it. 
as they convert on fourth down. It harkened back to the days where we watched these games almost in black and white, right? The stocky guy, the strong guy, the powerful guy with leg drive, give him the football, and even if the blocking isn't perfect, he has the ability to scatter bodies and move people enough to pick up first downs. That's what we just saw right there. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Second and 10, Stroud to throw yet again here. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Now Stroud, under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out and pick things up and give him more opportunities. And he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Mahomes. And oh, that one nearly intercepted. That would have sealed it. Instead, it'll be second down. This defense hasn't had the best showing in this game, but a critical knockdown there. If they can hang on, I guess the end will kind of justify the mean. Certainly, and just think of it this way. It may not be the quantity of the plays that they've had, because those haven't been great. But they get a few more quality ones like that, that could finish things off for them. Meanwhile, the home throw brought in by Watson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Brandon, it's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Mahomes. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Nice, well coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. This is first and 10. Mahomes. Open man here, it's the tight end, Kelsey. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. And remember, field goal does them no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. Here's first down. Mahomes to throw it. Over the middle complete. That's Brown. The Chiefs will use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go in the game. Now second down and a few inches. Here's Mahomes. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Daniil Hunter in there to take him down. And the clock 
for roll. Exactly what they were looking for. They've been giving up yardage. They've been letting them drive right downfield, but they got a sack right there. How about that for a little bit of revenge? Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and ten. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And the crowd a major factor now. Here's third down. Mahomes. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And whistles, and they take their final timeout with seven seconds left. Here's first and goal. Mahomes will throw. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. Charles, that drive was perfect, methodical, executed so well, and they grabbed that lead with almost no time left for a last gas from the other side. No way you could have drawn up a better final drive because not only did they keep their eyes on the end zone, they made sure they bled the clock out as well and denied their opponent a chance to respond. That's just terrific situational football to end this one. Extra point by Butker is on target. And it would appear, barring some late heroics, they're going to get out of here with a come-from-behind victory. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. One final shot for C.J. Stroud. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner. Although on that last play, they were so backed up, it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play, and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Houston, good night, everybody.